Hello, welcome to today's video, where I'll be covering my webcomic process in Clip Studio Paint. In today's video, we'll continue to discuss a few custom assets I recommend every comic artist prepare for themselves before starting a new project. Links to additional tutorials, as well as everything mentioned in today's video, will be down in the description below. Speech bubbles are one of the surprising ways you can give your comic its own sense of style. A simple round white bubble with plain text works fine for most stories, but if you're like me, you may want to modify your speech bubble's color, shape, or font to suit the style of your story better. To make a custom speech bubble, duplicate one of the preset bubble tools. In the tool property panel, you can adjust the bubble's color, outline, shape, etc. I recommend changing the brush shape to match the brush you intend to draw your line art with, as it'll give it a sense of cohesion that way. After getting the bubble looking how you like it, be sure to click the lock button at the top of the panel. This will prevent you from accidentally overwriting any settings you've chosen for your bubble. Now repeat the same steps with the text tool. In the tool property panel, you can choose a font, as well as its positioning in the bubble. Additional text settings like line spacing can be found in the subtool detail panel. You could stop here, but for an extra level of convenience, I recommend creating a registered asset of a speech bubble with text to drag and drop from the materials library. The steps for this process can be found in my previous video, linked in the description. When it's finally time to start drawing your comic, keeping all of your tools together in one place can be a huge convenience. That way you won't need to hunt through different subtool groups looking for that one brush you need. To organize your tools, you can opt for one of two approaches. Either create a new brush set entirely, or create a menu in the Quick Access panel. Creating a new brush set is as simple as duplicating all the brushes you want to use, then drag one of them into its own category in the Tool panel. This will create a new subtool group. Then, drag all the other duplicates into that group, and rename it however you like. Alternatively, you can create a new quick access menu set to quickly access your tools from their various groups without having to duplicate or move them. Simply create a new set via the dropdown, then go to quick access settings to add in your tools. You can also drag and drop tools into the list directly from their respective tool groups. Finally, you'll want to be sure you have color references for your characters and settings ready to go so you don't have to constantly import and color pick from outside images. In my earlier video, Setting Up Character Sheets Using 3D Models, I demonstrated how you can create a character reference sheet to use for color picking in the subtool panel. This is my favorite way to grab colors, as it also gives me a reference to use when drawing my characters to make sure they always look accurate. But if you prefer a more simplistic workspace layout, you may prefer to use color swatches instead. In the Color Set panel, you can create a new set and fill it up with colors you've picked from your character references. By right-clicking a swatch or using the drop-down, you can rename it so you always know what each one is for. Those are my recommendations for how you can set yourself up for success using custom assets when making a webcomic in Clip Studio Paint. Check the description below for my social media links and more tutorials.
Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.